Frank's a fucking rat. The fuck you say? What nigga you ain't notice? How you think he got out early? Coming in all on announcing shit, urgent, smiling in everybody's face. I guess he ever been that excited to see you before? Plus, you ain't never heard of a parole hearing? That shit takes months. Power wants people to believe in the crazy conspiracies I tend to come up with. We saw them put James St. Patrick in the ground, but they didn't open up the casket, which is going to feed everybody that think he ain't dead because you ain't get to see the body. This is the Lamont Tyson slash Crystal Tyson Power Book 2 Ghost Review. I got my wife with me, and she's wearing these beautiful makeup products by Colored Rain, who supplied the Power Crew last year. They supplied my wife this year. Be sure to get you guys some. Link will be in the description. And we will be doing a Colored Rain giveaway next week. If you're finding us for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. And tomorrow night, you guys know we do our live show. Um, it'll be with Larry and Sharonda from Pair Weight. And then next week, we'll be taking those phone calls, getting everybody's theory. Let's dive into it, honey. First scene, you've got Tasha talking to McLean. And the issue with them talking is everybody know good and damn well Tasha's lying to him. He done figured it out. Mm -hmm. He done brought in an investigator. Because mm -hmm. he knows she's lying about something. But they also know she's not the kingpin. Right. How do you see this relationship between her and McClane shaping up, knowing she's never going to tell him the truth? Uh, she need him. And he mm -hmm. needs her. Um... Honestly, I'm just sitting back and watching it unfold. I don't really have a major comment on the two of their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, clearly he knows she's lying. Eventually, she's going to have to tell the truth. And I don't think it really makes a difference of if she tells the truth or not. Because it, you know, we get the sense that he's going to be doing some dirty deal in any way. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at him as the potential proctor of the show. Mm -hmm. So she might as well fess up. Might as well. Ha ha having said that, they've already told you. He has a history of getting criminal defendants off. Right. You know, there are a lot of people that's got heat for him that we learned in this episode. I think that at some point in time, she's not going to have any choice but to come clean to him. And I mm -hmm. think he really genuinely has her back. Mm -hmm. He seems invested in her yeah. and Tariq and the family. I mean, if you're going to bat for somebody, you want to have all the cards laid out on the table. Right, so that so he can lie to get her out it of it. It's in her best interest to go ahead and tell him because I don't think it's going to make a difference. It's so, not like he's going to quit. So that he can lie to get her out of it. Right. Exactly. Um, moving right along, simple on that one. We learned that Ezekiel really is a dumb jock, and <laughs> he has the hots for Professor Megram. Is she going to give him any play? You seen he went in her office. He kept trying to holler at her. He called her. What did he call a girl? He did say, tell, call a girl at one point. Right. <laughs> yeah. Real casual. Yeah. With her. Is, is she feeling him? He going to get any play? He going to get them panty drawers? When I first saw him go in the office and the way he was talking her up to, um, Tariq. to Tariq, I thought, well, maybe them two are going to be the ones to hook up instead of her and Tariq. Nope. But she was batting down everything that he threw at her. Mm -hmm. No interest whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, so no, I don't think it's going to go down between the two of them. Nah, she, she ain't feeling that with him, ladies and gentlemen. She was not feeling him at all. Mm -hmm. And fellas, you know, within about a few minutes, if a woman is feeling you or not, maybe he ain't struggling enough. She might have a soft spot for, for students who are struggling. Oh, we'll get to what her <laughs> struggle is later in this review. Then we learn that Mary J's character, Monet, they call her Mo, is trying to replace her baby daddy. She's sleeping around with another damn Rico Suave guy. His name is Ramirez. But we learn he works on the police force and is supposed to be throwing shade when something happens. Did you see this coming? Uh, I didn't see it. I didn't really know what to expect from her character. But she's not trying to replace her baby daddy, her husband. No. Because um, she said nobody can give her the protection that she needs on the outside. So mm -hmm. no, she's not trying to replace him. She just wants somebody... Scratch the, the itch. Because he's in jail for life. Well, so, she, well, she's trying to get somebody to scratch the itch that he can't scratch while he's in jail. So what tells, something tells me that he's not going to be in jail for life. Oh, <laughs> hell no. You're right. Power's not keeping his ass uh, in jail. He's going to get it's, out one, somehow. He's going to get out and it's going to be a matter of how powerful is the daddy. Uh -huh. You know, how, what are his connections? Can he be connected to the Jimenez cartel? Something. He's going to be a powerful mm -hmm. character. Yeah. And so she's just basically using Rico Suave. Right. You know, to throw cover as a police officer. 
And he even admitted, you're still in love with a guy who's in jail for life? Mm -hmm. So he wants more out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. She just wants to keep him on the side. Hey, fell most fellas would be happy with just, you know, getting the panty draws, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and going. Mm -hmm. But Rico Suave, ladies and gentlemen, he wants, he wants, I guess, a family, wife and kids, whatever. She ain't going to give it. Yeah. Then we get to Tariq going to his conical studies class. And they got one sister girl in there who's telling the white folks the way it is. What'd you think about that sister girl? Do her thing. Do her thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tariq still ain't finishing books. He's only getting halfway through the books. And ladies and gentlemen, at some point in time, we know something is going to have to give with Tariq, his studies, his outside of school life. And also him trying to do the thing for Ezekiel. You know that at some point in time, that's going to that's gonna break. Right. It's, it's, gonna... Just, it's unreal. I'm trying not to, uh, I guess, harp down on on the storyline too much. Because a lot of stuff is unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Again, he's carrying this heavy, accelerated course load where he's trying to complete four years in three. Mm -hmm. he's, students, he's studying Ezekiel in all of his courses. He's, mm -hmm. he's tutoring Ezekiel in all of his courses. Doing his work for him. Yeah, so how are you going to do all of this? And then you run into to impromptu meetings with your counselor, with your lawyer. Going, and then he's I'm trying, just ignoring the fact that this is just unrealistic and just going with it for now. Then he's trying to get back into the drug game because he's got to raise money to get his mama. Exactly. That, so I guess this would this would coincide with people who are not buying into the power storyline because they feel like it's unrealistic. And honestly, what they're doing with Tariq, you really expect us to think that in just a year, Tariq has the maturity to handle all these adult things that most adults can't handle mm -hmm. without counseling. We're supposed to believe that he's all of a sudden mature enough to handle these things. Hard pill to swallow, but maybe what they want us to get is the journey of him learning how to handle these things. You know, I can take it after one semester. So after one semester, if he's juggling all these balls and in the end, they all drop. <laughs> and he's out of school and he's only doing the drug game or he's out of mm -hmm. the drug game and only doing school. I get that. Mm -hmm. But if they continue this on for, you know, beyond the first semester... Again, I'm still looking at it with a side eye. Okay. Well, Tariq had a meeting with McLean, which highlights, you know, he's having to do all these different things. Mm -hmm. McLean basically wants him to say his daddy was a dirtbag to help their case with Tasha. He then turns around and has a meeting with Stearns, who's like, hell to the no. Mm -hmm. I have business dealings with you. Mm -hmm. You my business partner. I can't have you messing up James's legacy because that could hurt the funds, and the benefits that might come toward me and you at the end. Mm -hmm. And he basically tells Reek, I want you to get your ass up there and say good things about it. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of the day, the only person it seems like Reek has to answer to is Stearns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, money talks. Money talks. Mm -hmm. um, so when is that, that going to fall on his head, his relationship with Stearns? Because Stearns keeps referring to him as his daddy, and you know Reek ain't feeling that. Yeah, yeah. I, when, they, when he had this conflicting... Uh, advice on what to do at the funeral. I didn't know who he was going to take. I didn't know if he was going to bash his father or if he was going to try to prop his father up. But like you said, at the end of the day, money talks and I figured he would go along the lines of what Stearns told him to do. You want to know what the white folks say? What? Money talk, bullshit walks. Okay. That's what they say. Okay. And that's what this situation is going to be with Stearns. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along to everybody's new favorite professor in all of America, Professor Carey. I ain't going to call her by her last name. I'm going to call her Carey. Mm -hmm. Every Carey we know has been scary and nuts, haven't they? Oh, it? goodness. <laughs> well, she's having a discussion with Jabari, who y'all know they had a past relationship. And now we started getting details as to what happened in their past relationship. It gets revealed that she not only got his ass the job there, but they had the relationship and they split up because he wrote a tell-all memoir about her. Mm -hmm. Even when he did all that, they split up. She, he, she still gets him the job by her doing that. And what, he finagled his way into her department. And so her, now they have to interact with each other. What does that tell you about her relationship with him? She's not done with him. Mm -hmm. She admitted that she wasn't. She mm -hmm. admitted that she thought she was over him, and mm -hmm. I guess she isn't. And we already know he ain't over her. Mm -hmm. And they they kind of get into it because he's want, he's still trying to figure out why are you going so hard for this kid Tariq. Mm -hmm. So because she know Tariq is having so many issues, they're going to do a vigil for Tariq's daddy. Mm -hmm. 
if y'all followed my breakdown of the trailer, y'all heard me talk about that visual. And he's all like, why? Why are you doing all this for him? I'm wondering, when is he going to put two and two together and figure out that she's got the hots for Tariq? Mm -hmm. Are y'all ready for a Tariq, Professor Carey sex scene? No, I'm get, sorry. get your mind wrapped no. around that. We All the fellas ready to see no. Carey in action. No, but before that happened, be, well, she got into action with Jabari, yeah. but they ain't really show nothing. We don't want to see Tariq, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then later on after that, ladies and gentlemen, we see Carrie talking to her sponsor. If you followed my videos last week, I told y'all she was a sex addict. They revealed it right here as she's talking to her sponsor. Mm -hmm. And the sponsor wants to know, what the hell was you thinking getting Jabari the job at your school in the first place? Mm -hmm. this AA, the, the sponsor basically said, you're not over him. Mm -hmm. Do you right. think she's over him? No. She said now, she thought she was, but she's not. But now what they didn't reveal, which is what I think we, we're probably going to learn. What they didn't reveal is what was her sexual predilections that created the addiction? It's one thing to just be addicted to sex. But I'm thinking maybe she's got addictions to kids that are 20 something or kids that are in dire need. Is it just kids or it could you be mean like college students? College, that's what I'm saying. Jabari college isn't student. a college student. No, but he was a husband, and I'm assuming that what broke them up was her sex addiction. They were married. What I don't, I didn't say they was married. I said broke them up. Broke them up could mean relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. You said he was a husband. Okay, well, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Uh, he wrote a book about her. Okay. And put all her business out there. Mm -hmm. So she probably had a predilection that he wasn't fixing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably got something to do with young African American men that are like college age, who possibly. Are? Who are struggling? They got some type of uh, yeah. some type of background that yeah. causes them to go through turmoil. Yeah, they got strife. some. They got some. They got some baggage or whatever. So we'll follow. You know, we gonna follow that story. Every every man and some of y'all women want me to keep following that one, and I'm the man for the job. Oh goodness. Tariq as Ezekiel, can he come to dinner mm -hmm. with him? He skips out on the party with Brady. He was like, I'm not going with you to the party, Brayden. I got something to do. Because Tariq is trying to get intel on the family. Mm -hmm. Basically is what he's up to. He gets there and Frank comes in. Mary J. Blige is grilling him. Frank obviously has something for the daughter. Mm -hmm. Immediately, what did I say when Frank popped in out of jail? He snitched. I, Im <laughs> I immediately said, you don't get out of jail that quick. You snitch. Mm -hmm. And later on, they play into the story. They show... They have a big falling out where everybody don't really trust Frank. The table scatters. Mm -hmm. they ask, she asked Kane to take a reek back to school. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the part that blew my mind. Okay. She want, she want Kane to shake reek up a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, they've been building Kane up as the, he's this hardcore street thug, right? right. Why the hell is reek? Schooling, schooling him on the dynamics of a damn snitch. Right. Talk about that scene, because that right. was just like, man, you, you just done messed up that character right. already. He's the, either he's dumb or he's reckless or both. So he could be all muscle and no brain. Basically. You mean like Z? You so you mean to tell me the only people in that family that's got brains is the women? It hey, could be. Damn. Could be. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So Damn. that's what we thought. The, I thought the same thing. Like he seemed so enlightened by what Tariq was telling him. He was he was dumbfounded. I'm, he was looking like Bobby Brown. Oh goodness. <laughs> he was looking like yeah. the character he played on BET. And yeah. And so that tells you that he might not be all that that bright. He's probably all muscle. Saying he's like Tommy. <laughs> Tommy well, Tommy brighter than that. Tom, Tommy is. Yeah. Tommy Tommy, is. Tommy brighter than uh -huh. that. Yeah. Like right, damn. Come Tommy on, Tommy is man. Just, it's, it's street smart. And, and, and then on top of that, you hate for it to be Reek, the one that's got to school him. Right. Like on top, on, not only do you hate to see this character that they have built up to be some, you know, I'm down for the call. I'll shoot anybody in the eyeball over anything. And then Reek is the one schooling him. But man. then the first time they built up a character and you see them fall flat. Oh, you talking about Benny. Benny. You still ain't oh, got over goodness. Cousin I'm, Benny, I'm still, have you? I'm still mad about Benny. Yeah, yes. yeah. She's still <laughs> mad about Cousin Benny, uh -huh. y'all. Moving right along. So, Reek gets back to school. He sees that they've got a vigil. And you know, Reek is torn right now because he's got one person telling him he needs to say bad things about his daddy. Then he's got his lawyer saying, you've got to trash him. Mm -hmm. He gets to this vigil. He is disgusted. And Professor Meagrum, Carrie, excuse me, did it for him. She's trying to help him. Mm -hmm. 
She's trying to help this boy. I right. think, like I said, we know she's she more attached. She's trying to help this boy or trying to help herself? Both. Uh-huh. She wants to help the boy become a man like boys to men. Okay. That's what she's trying to do. Oh, Lord. Lord, help. Girl, girl, go check on your child. Go, go check. <laughs> oh, good, 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 goodbye, honey. I'll finish this on my own. Okay, so Reek leaves. Reek leaves the 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 vigil to go ahead and go with Braden to the party, and it's a pretty good thing that he did do that because at this party we learned that Braden's brother is airhead, and the police come there to shut down this party. And while Reek is there, he's observing what's going on. They was getting ready to arrest the brother. The brother punched the police officer in the face, right? Then Braden runs up there and says, I'm Braden, blase, blase, my last name. And then the cop realized, oh, your last name is the one on the dining hall. And then they realize who Braden and the brother are, and they let him go, which was our prime example of what we all call in America, ladies and gentlemen, a white privilege. And while they're ex displaying that white privilege, Tariq is looking over there like, hmm, let me see how I can capitalize on this damn white privilege and turn it into my privilege. And you know he's going to hem up that damn brother. So this is a situation where I'm on Tariq's side. I want him to hem up that brother who thinks he's the shit and he ain't nothing but white privilege, you know what. Moving right along. Didn't I tell y'all about that guard? I told you I thought that guard possibly got the hots for Tasha and she's crooked. Turns out the guard is crooked. And it turns out she's talking to an inmate who I have heard from my family, Moochella, who actually knows the actress playing that uh, inmate. We learned that the inmate done slept with somebody and needs a morning after pill. And she actually has control over the guard. So she's telling the guard, you better get me a damn morning after pill. And the guard is just kind of like, uh, whatever. And the inmate's like, I'm going to turn everybody against you unless you get me this pill. Who is over there listening in on this whole event? None other than our girl, Tasha St. Patrick. And we know it's kind of funny that we're looking at this story and they, they kind of made Tasha St. Patrick seem weak. When in all honesty, was she not kind of the brains behind Tommy and Ghost situation? Now, no, she wasn't the king, the, the king, kingpin, but she gave a lot of insight into things that helped that organization run. And it's kind of unfortunate. It seems like they're dumbing her character down a little bit. But I did enjoy seeing her listening in because it's actually showing you that she is going to try to make a comeback. Uh-oh, look who's going to join the party, which means I can't use foul language no more. That's only if she stays quiet, so. My wife has come back with the baby. I just got finished talking about that guard that Muchella knows. And ladies and gentlemen, do a video about that. I hear that that guard is going to be playing the role of Tommy with Tasha. Now, let's talk about McLean and the McLean and Cooper Sacks going before the judge mm -hmm. and summoning D.A. Sullivan. Mm -hmm. Cooper, Cooper Sacks thought he had one over on the team, didn't he? Mm -hmm. he and in true Cooper Sacks form, he's just a pure F up, a punk you know what. McLean tongue with, just, just booty lashes him all up in the judge's office when they called in Sullivan to just basically discredit what happened to Tasha. Right. But then who did Cooper Sacks call in and shut it all down? He's bringing in all the old all-stars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who did he bring in, Crystal? Um, what is her name? I can't think of her name right Sergeant now. Sergeant Rodriguez. Yeah. Brought in Blanca Rodriguez. Uh -huh. Someone that a lot of y'all hate. A lot of y'all said y'all hated her voice. I loved her character. Uh -huh. I think she played a, a pivotal role in last season. And apparently she's going to play a pivotal role in this season as well. Right. Now let's talk about... I the, was happy when I saw Blanca yeah, for some reason. Yeah, you was happy because uh -huh. you, you know she's drama. It brings back that nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. I mean, are we going to see Angela's sister pop up too? Hell, yeah. let's have a whole reunion. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Now this was probably the most pivotal moment in this whole episode. The funeral casket scene. Mm -hmm. Hey, baby. They had all the greatest hit folks there. <laughs> they had Tate, Tate. They had they had Sax. 
They had Pastor Mastodon. Mastodon, yeah. Looking like one of them dinosaurs. <laughs> had him there. Ta now tell me, talk to me about how they brought Tasha in there, man. Now you know, I had to ask Lamont right. about fifty times. Isn't she in jail for killing ghosts? Killing ghosts? Yep. <laughs> Queen so, Pen, so, King Pen statue. So how is she in jail for killing ghosts, but they're letting her out to do his eulogy? Right. And did you see her makeup? Makeup oh was goodness. on fleek. They ain't about to let you out of jail and have your makeup looking that good. Oh my goodness. Do no eulogy. You don't perform a eulogy at a funeral of the person that you didn't kill. Right. And you and they just put you in jail for that probably like the next day. Or maybe we'll give this a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, Tasha was there. The new Reek sister was there. <laughs> the grandma was there. Uh -huh. um, somebody else was there. McLean showed up. I mean, you had all the heavy hitters there. And the issue here was who was going to perform the eulogy. So they basically told Tasha not to say nothing. Mm -hmm. It was a toss-up between Tariq, between Tasha, and between the pastor. And Tate. And Tate. And Tate. So you got four people showing up on Ghost's behalf. Yep. Half of them shouldn't be there. <laughs> Eventually, Reek did it. And he did it in a manner where he didn't necessarily throw him under the bus, but he didn't necessarily cheer him up either. I still think it was a positive spin on his father. I do. I do. I do. And I, I actually could believe the speech Reed gave. Reed said he really didn't know his father. He said his father would have wanted him to be a better man and do better. And I actually enjoyed seeing Uncle Gabe show up. Yeah. My folk, Colonel Taylor from yeah. a different world. So is he going to be weaved throughout this storyline? You... Mm -hmm. All the people that's in on that um, Breeze conspiracy is probably over there having an orgasm because mm -hmm. they, they, Uncle Gabe is connected to that storyline. I don't think so. I, I mean, I think that might be all we see of so Uncle Gabe. So he came back for a one-time appearance? Maybe, or he might be, they might have him a couple of episodes down the road where Tariq might have to go get consoling from him. Because mm -hmm. it seems like they're going to have him as a consoler. That's mm -hmm. what I get from that. Or to introduce more of Ghost's past. Could be because they talked yeah. about his granddaddy. Yeah. So maybe that'll happen. But all in all, I honestly could believe the speech Reek gave. Um, you, the emotion... Because I feel, I honestly feel like Reek was being honest. I'm still rolling my eyes since he's the one who killed his daddy, so. <laughs> I, I mean, I felt like Reek did feel the, Reek felt the words that he said. Mm -hmm. But in in the back of his mind, he's still lying. Mm -hmm. He's still lying to everybody. Yeah. Now, as a viewer, uh -huh. I didn't feel the weight of this funeral. I um, didn't either. It wasn't mm -hmm. like emotional. Oh, my goodness. This is ghost that's being buried. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that. So mm -hmm. I wasn't emotionally connected to this scene. I was more so, you know, interested in seeing who popped up, like Tate. And he popped up. I'm like, oh, there's Tate. Oh, there's so-and-so. But it didn't. Yeah, I, I wasn't emotionally, uh, it wasn't emotionally charged for, right. me, for some and, reason. Well, I think because they didn't hype it up. The, I mean, you first of all, you still ain't seen the body, which all the conspiracy folks is going to say he ain't dead because you ain't see the body. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a weight. You didn't see tearful people. The people that was closely yeah. connected to ghosts, you ain't see none of them. They didn't and, set the tone. For right. The they didn't set it. There's no time he did there be there to cry for his brother. Right. Tasha ain't really around to cry for his brother. Um, Angela's dead, who probably would have been the most tearful. Th this is just someone who doesn't have any friends and family left to create an emotional right. attachment to. Right. So agree. that's why there's no weight to him dying. Yeah. Plus, they didn't show his body. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lord have mercy. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, he still might be hanging around for all my conspiracy theorists out there that want ghosts to not be dead, even though... He's gone. He's not coming back to this show. And I thought Tommy might pop up at the funeral, but Tommy's going to have to show up. Mm -hmm. If they're going to run with this kingpin on um, Tasha, mm -hmm. Tommy's going to have to show up. Now, the DNC guy, or somebody, Steve, Steve He, someone said, well, Tommy ain't here. Yeah, that was Steve. And so, is that just a done deal? It, could Tommy could be there. Well, or are they? Is that does that statement it, mean they're not going to bring him in at all? Like he it, don't even exist. The, he's on the run and they can't find him. The DNC don't want Tommy to come up because they're trying to get the story corroborated in the manner they want it. Mm -hmm. Now McLean might ask for someone to go find Tommy. Mm -hmm. um, I, Tommy's going to have to show up. There, there's see. just no way around it. Tommy's going to have to show up. And so after that, they move on to Frank. And if you followed my trailer, I asked you guys, whose little girl hand was it 
holding that little tiny gun. A lot of y'all thought it was Diana Tejada and it was Kane Tejada going in there to bop Frank in the head based on the, the information he got from Reek and based on um, Mo basically saying, yeah, he snitched. And having said that, my wife hated the way. You hated the way that they, he chopped up the body after he yeah, shot him. We don't need to see all that. Yes, we do. We've seen it enough. We don't need to see all that. <laughs> Sorry. So we, we see they're not playing no game. And after they went through that, one thing that's probably going to be a, a strife within the, the, the Tejada family, you saw where he actually saw the cop going into the house with the mama. Mm -hmm. Y'all loud again? We about to make our exit. All right. Goodbye, my loving family. We tried. Family. We yeah. got a little bit a lot further this yeah, time. Yeah, you did. You, Kane saw Officer Ramirez, Rico Suave, going into the house when he pulled up. And that that hurt him some kind of way because this is probably something he doesn't know that his mom is keeping from him. Maybe, he, I don't think he knows it. He might know that she got cops in her back pocket, but not any of them that might be trying to have some relations with her because he's seen this guy carrying a, a bottle of wine and flour and an envelope and stuff. So I think that hurt him to know that his mom has got a lie that she's holding o over his head. And right before Tasha left the funeral and she was hugging Tariq, she mentioned to Tariq, I need you to get me a morning after pill. And so what does Reek do? Reek goes to the Tejada family, Diana in particular, and says, can you, your dad get me something in prison? Diana goes to the mama and the mama solidifies it. But this lets the mama know that Reek got a little bit more dirty dealing than the squeaky clean college kid that he's playing off. And now she wants people to start getting information on Reek. So I'm sure the speech that she gave Diana about using her sex appeal to get information from Frank, I think she's going to take that whole dynamic and have her throw it on Reek to dig up information on Reek. And she also asked Officer Rico Suave to dig up information on Reek. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't understand how they don't know who Reek is when they're in New York. His daddy was just running for governor and his daddy was a major drug person in that city. How do you not know him? I guarantee you the husband probably know of him. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't surprise me if the baby daddy that's in jail might have had a run in with, with Ghost and Tommy somewhere along the way when they killed so many of these members of these individual cartels. Book it. And that's going to do it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, fill in the gaps where I left holes. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram, send me messages, send me your theories. I try to make videos based on a lot of my subscribers' theories. You guys do such a good job of helping out. Also, be sure to join me live tomorrow night at 9 p.m. It'll be my last time going on with Sharonda from Paraweight. Me and Larry will still be around, and we will start taking phone calls next Monday and Wednesday because we're interested in hearing your theories. And until that next Sexy as Hell video, I'll see you.